Yeah, Billy Nitro, your internet knife and gun guru. Here we are, guys, back with another video. Been a while. Notice today it's been almost a month since I posted a video. So we got a highly requested video here, guys. As you can see, you've probably already read the title. So had a lot of people over the last year or so ask me to do a comparison on the Norinco versus the M56 SKS. So here we are. We're going to get to it. We're going to show you all the little goodies, the markings, and whatnot. And eventually, probably not in this video, but I'm going to have to talk the girlfriend in. you going up and filming me at the gun range, shooting these things. So, we'll have to get at her with that. So, you guys get on it. So, anyways, let's get to it. Okay guys, here we are. We have them laid out on a yoga mat here to do a nice comparison here. There's 101 uses for a yoga mat. We have found 102 uses for a yoga mat. So anyways, I guess before I get started here, I'm going to tell you a little bit of info on these rifles right here. This is, from my research, a 1963 Top 56 rifle. This is a last year production Norinco Top 56. Okay. That would put this around 1980. Now, these are both factory 26 rifles. You can see that here. There's your factory 26 there. Your rifle may be different. It, there, there was quite a few of these factories over there. The factory, tw factory 26, Arsenal 26, whatever you want to call it there. The Jane Shi Arsenal, one of the longest running arsenals in China. Um, it now houses uh, TVs and home goods. They switched that about 1982. Maybe, I think there's some, said something about motorcycles and stuff too. I don't, don't really know, don't really care. Anyways, it's no longer a, a small arms arsenal. Um, these slings are not probably not correct to these. I believe this may be a SKS slash AK sling. There you can see it's marked 762. This one is a uh, sling that they uh, come up with. They, they consider this the a QD, a quick detach with the spring here. Now they didn't come up with this for uh, jungle rot in the jungles there from the typical leather attachments you see there on these slings. You see these a lot on eBay and everywhere. Amazon, it's just a Chinese repop here. I don't like them. But anyways, this is, they tried to fix the jungle rot there with the uh, quick detach spring there, which is not very quick. But anyways, I just prefer these slings better. They're probably not very accurate, but anyways. So I guess the big difference here is we see we have the blade bayonet, the spike bayonet. Now they changed this in 1965. They went from the blade to the spike, and then they later along down the road they kind of wiggled around a little bit because there was an issue with the Geneva Convention because this is basically a triangle and it has three different blades on it, and they said that was inhumane. So they kind of went back to the blade. Now I'm not really sure what's much difference there on the humane part there inhumane uh, a blade's a blade to me but any good deer rifle should have a good blade on the front of it but anyways um i guess when i was telling you this is a 1963 rifle now the russians went over to china in the mid slash late 1950s so this rifle was more than likely made on uh, Russian tooling. Now, there's some very nice rifles out there. They're uh, called Shino, Shino Soviets. Now, those are the very first rifles. You can tell you have one by the serial, by the serial number. Now, those are the rifles that were very early, made in the late 50s, um, made with the Russians uh, sitting there uh, helping in the manufacturing process. Now, this is very close to that. They, they call this a, uh, I can't remember what they call that. Anyways, but this is the Norinco. Now, Norinco is a 
kind of an importer name and do that for importation. These were banned from importation in the early 90s with an assault weapons, around the 90, 92 assault weapons ban. They were banned, sanctioned from China. So Chinese weapons are banned, but this is a 2014 importation here, okay? How do they get, how do they get imported rifles here if they're banned? Okay, well, I'm gonna tell you that. If a country's, uh, if they're banned from, banned from import, they can take their weapons and set them off country into another country. And if they sit there for another 30 years, they can now be imported back in here into the US. So that's what happened with this. Now this was, take the camera off. This Type 56 was imported by TGI, that's Tennessee Guns International, Knoxville, Tennessee. Bit of an infamous company because they got caught uh, messing around with some full auto AKs, um, kind of sneaked them in under the wire and they got in a little bit of trouble. I'm not really sure on the full details of that, but you can look it up, you can find it on YouTube. But this was a purchase from TGI. The, the guy that purchased this that I bought it from, he pulled it out of the crate, soaked in Cosmoline, Battlefield uh, finish on it, and uh, he done a little sanding on it and put some stain on it or whatever, and I stripped all that stuff off of it. Now, that's the first video I done with this rifle. I will post that in the description. You can check it out. It was all shiny like the Norinco here, but I stripped it down to the original finish as much as possible. I think he tried to make it look like a Norinco. But anyways, let's get to the, the differences here. So we got the, we have the blade, we have the spike, and we have different sling locations here. So this on the side, this on the bottom of, obviously, there is a uh, difference in the trigger guards here. This is a milled trigger guard here. As you can see there, this one is a stamped. You see a three there on that one. You can really tell the difference in the stamping and the milled right there okay now we have the barrel lug this has a what it's called a full barrel lug this one has a half barrel lug you see some other stampings there there's the sots there that has like a long roman numeral three this one has an n on it a little bit of a difference Okay, and there's a little difference in the uh, gas tubes here. I think this is kind of more of a stamped version. This one on the top 56 is much heavier. I believe it's milled. Okay, let's go up here. There's your front side block there. This one has a stamp on the front of it. Pick it up, there it is. It has, I don't know, it's kind of, it looks like a one or something on there. A little bit of a difference there. Okay, another difference in these rifles. You have a lightning cut on the early ones. Now this started in the, in the late 50s and stopped there about 64. See, there'll be nothing there. Just a lightning cut in the bolt. Okay. I believe there's some stamping in there. There we go. Now there is some rifles out there that have a direct threaded barrel into the milled receivers that don't have a barrel lug. The, the barrel is threaded into the receiver. That's kind of looked down upon. And there is uh, a few uh, rifles out there that have stamped receivers. Now, they're kind of looked down upon, but they are very collectible because there's just very few of them. So if you ever come across one of those, pick it up because they are 
they they sell for at least double if not a little more from what i've heard now if you're trying to determine what rifle you have you can go to there's a site out there uperj.com very good site it's all user collected data chinese do not uh release their info on these on their weapons or whatever so there's not much info out there directly from the Chinese on these rifles. It's mostly user collected and databased. There's your butt stock there. They both have trap doors there. Little difference in the tools in the in the bottom, but I'm not sure these are period correct. So you just kind of have to see what you got and look for some pictures on those. I'm not gonna open them up because I'm not sure they're correct. Both of these are clear for you safety sallies. Probably should have been at the beginning. I'm gonna pull the, the bolt out of the top 56 here. So we'll lift, there's a little difference here too. You see that ledge is on the, on the top. It'll be on the bottom for the Norinco. Anyways, we're gonna pop this out and you just pull your pin out right there. You gotta be kind of careful. This this upper dust cover is under a little bit of spring tension when you pull this out. There's your dust cover. Okay, there's your recoil spring. There's your bolt carrier and bolt. And you see this is uh, matching here. These are these rifles are both matching, with the exception of the dust cover on this top one. I'll explain that in a second focused in now these have a free floated free floated firing pin but you want to make sure if you've picked one of these rifles up you want to make sure this firing pin channel here is clear no cosmoline in it you don't want that jammed any any obstructions in there on your firing pin or you'll pull the trigger one time and you'll have a fully auto SKS, you don't want that. There's your bolts there. Pretty much the same other than the lighting, lightning cut. Down here. Now, when I purchased this Top 56 here, this Norinco, I purchased it from a pawn shop and the guy had one of the cover dust covers that mounted a red dot on here very tacticalish so I had to pick this up online I found a non serialized cover here as you can see on the top 56 these are serialized this one has never had a serial number in it so that's pretty cool had a little rust on it I had to fix but that's okay just adds character no difference in the not much anyway, there's a little difference there in the, in the front of the recoil spring there. There you go. There's your bolt carrier group and bolt. Now, I put a little bluing on this. It had some pitting on it a little bit. Had some dark spots I couldn't get sanded out of it, so I put a little cold bluing on that and darkened it up a little bit there are some rifles out there that have black uh, blued uh, bolt carrier groups but this is not original to the rifle I just think it looks cool there is your bolts there pretty much the same except the lightning cut in the bolt carrier group a little difference in that extractor pin there a little difference in the firing pin as well Okay, there 
is the uh, whoa dropped it and there's your boat carrier groups now you will see the lightning cut in there on the top 56 there Take a look down in the milled receiver. Pretty much the same. And I believe that's as far as I'm gonna break them down. I'm not gonna pull the, the, the gas rod, the gas pistons are the same. Throw these back together real quick and wrap this video up. Now you want to put your little squirrely part right there into the bolt carrier group leave the straight part on the rear now you push up and let your recoil spring there and assembly rest on that ledge and you pull your pin out here drop your rear dust cover right on there In, turn down. Now you want to rack it, function test it. That'll pop your spring back onto the rear dust cover. It'll pop it off that ledge. Make sure you're empty. Close the trigger down. Boom. Check your reset. There we go. Put it back on safe. Put your magazine back up. And she is ready for action, guys. Check that out. There you go. Now, doopsy doopsy doopsy. There we go. Hard to do this on camera when you're looking in the opposite direction. Okay, just drop the bolt in there, drop that right down on top of it. Squirrely part into the bolt carrier group, rest on the ledge, pull the pin out, rear dust cover on, down in there, put your pin down, racker back. down got about a four pound trigger on the on the sks and sks is not known for their great triggers but you can get them cleaned up pretty well if you know somebody knows what they're doing so that is it guys that is the comparison of the top 56 sks and uh norinko top 56 so thank you guys for tuning in if you haven't subbed up to the channel hit that sub button you can't see all these awesome videos without being subbed up to the channel thank you guys for watching if i left anything out throw it in the comments uh crucify me well anyways guys hillbilly is over and out of here guys peace two beauties